Excellent. Um, my name's Olivia, and today I'm going to be talking about a molecular epidemiology study assessing HIV-1 in Guatemala and Mexico. And this research was conducted under the mentorship of Dr. Mehta at the UCSD School of Medicine Division of Infectious Diseases and Global Public Health. Understanding HIV transmission is really important in order to gain knowledge both on viral dissemination and to prevent further transmission. Knowledge about the spread of HIV throughout Mexico and Central America is fairly recent and is continuing uh, to develop as the field of molecular epidemiology is. Current research in this population really aims to understand two key things. The first is HIV dissemination throughout the region, and this includes the role of migration, travel, border policy, as well as the prevalence and transmission of drug mutations. Additionally, uh, research aims to assess the epidemic among high-risk populations that are both at heightened uh, risk of acquiring and transmitting the disease. Recent research efforts to understand the relation of HIV epidemics in the region have been using uh, molecular epidemiology. And evidence from these previous studies suggests that much of the HIV epidemics in Mesoamerica, which consists of Mexico and the Central American nations, has its origins in the United States. And this has been uh, hypothesized to have spread in several different ways. One is that as migrant workers um, or potentially asylum seekers from Mesoamerica go to the U.S. and are returned back to their home countries. Additionally, there have been substantial population shifts due to social political upheaval, um, and these are facilitated by a common language throughout the region that allows for a lot of population movement. And while we do have uh, primarily evidence of the U.S. epidemic trickling down through Mexico into Central America, there's also evidence, but to a, a slightly lesser extent, of the southern epidemic, mostly concentrated in Brazil, moving up through Panama and Costa Rica into Mesoamerica as well. This is seen to a lesser extent than the U.S. epidemic. However, I think as recent years progress, uh, we may see more and more of this in Mesoamerica. While we do have this evidence of bi-directional pressures um, of the epidemics, there is also evidence in previous studies of cross-border transmission occurring in the region. Putative transmission links have been identified between Honduras, El Salvador, Belize, Guatemala, uh, and Mexico. And phylogenetic analysis has really suggested that Guatemala may be a destination for viral gene flow as well as a dissemination epicenter of uh, transmission in the region. So to summarize all of this, uh, previous studies have indicated bidirectional gene flow from both northern and southern epidemics. Uh, there is strong evidence of dynamic cross-border transmission within Mesoamerica itself. And then lastly, phylogenetic analysis has suggested that Guatemala may play a very critical role in dissemination throughout the region. We look specifically at the Guatemalan HIV epidemic. Guatemala has more individuals living with HIV than any of its surrounding nations. The general population prevalence is estimated to be 0.5%, and that increases uh, for groups that we consider to be high risk, which includes men who have sex with men, transgender women, and female sex workers. The prevalence among female sex workers may actually be higher than what's estimated here, as this number does not include those who work within informal establishments and don't have access to regular testing. In addition to this, Guatemala is of interest because it borders four other uh, countries in Central America and additionally has uh, many individuals migrating in and out of its borders annually. Guatemala is known as the gateway to America and has millions coming into the country and exiting the country, most of whom have a destination towards the United States. This combined with evidence that we've seen of uh, specific viral clades from Guatemala being seen in other surrounding countries uh, and previous data really suggests that Guatemala is a critical point of viral gene flow um, and therefore it's important to really understand transmission within this region. Uh, applying molecular epidemiology to HIV really allows for the understanding of social, demographic, and geographical correlated disease transmission. 
molecular epidemiology studies allow uh, for better information and interventions to really contain disease, not only on a local or national level, but also from what we're seeing here on a regional level and looking at disease transmission across a whole region. And to do this, uh, we analyze HIV genetic sequences, and this helps to give an understanding of underlying transmission. And that's through the identification of what we call clusters of related infections. Clusters are uh, generated using a cluster generating software, and they're based on a calculated distance matrix. And what this does is it really assesses how related or how unrelated uh, different sequences are. And from there, using a threshold, it can determine clusters of related infections. For our research, we wanted to evaluate transmission networks in Mexico and Guatemala and get a better understanding of how transmission is occurring. Specifically, we wanted to determine, is there a difference in this rate of clustering or this connectivity between infections between Mexico and Guatemala based on this previous information? And then additionally, we wanted to see if there are any significant demographic variables associated with individuals who cluster or have highly related infections versus individuals who do not cluster. Do this, a cohort of HIV positive individuals collected from across Mexico and Guatemala by the Mesoamerican Drug Resist Monitoring Program. This program uh, sequences uh, partial HIV from individuals that come into clinical appointments, either diagnosis or further treatment. And this is really in an attempt to uh, gain understanding of prevalencies of transmitted drug mutations or transmitted drug resistance. But from this, we can also use all of these sequences collected to get a better understanding of transmission. Uh, 3,956 sequences were included from uh, this program, and all of these sequences, or all individuals, had not previously had exposure to antiretroviral therapy at the time of sequencing. Brief overview of the demographics of the cohort collected. Uh, the cohort is mostly male, about 74%, with a large proportion that are heterosexual, uh, almost half the cohort. A majority are also in their 30s with a mean age of 34, although we do see a very wide uh, spread in our cohort in age with individuals as young as one year old with mother to child transmission and as old as 85. Similarly, a uh, year of diagnosis also has a large uh, spread with early earliest diagnosis being in 1999 and the latest diagnosis in 2016 with a mean of 2012. Sequences were collected from every state in Guatemala and majority of the states uh, in Mexico. Majority of the cohort were Mexicans, 62% uh, Mexicans and 38% Guatemalans. And distribution across states really varies. Uh, you can see some states, especially those that are more heavily populated, have a larger number of individuals. And then we do have some states within the cohort that have as few as one or two individuals. Additionally, uh, HIV risk differed between the two countries, uh, the proportion of HIV risk. Um, proportions of men who have sex with men or injecting drug users were higher uh, for Mexico than Guatemala. And conversely, uh, Guatemala had a larger proportion of heterosexuals as well as mother to child transmission within this cohort. Phylogenetic analysis was conducted among these uh, collected sequences using the MEGA-X program, and this was to infer maximum likelihood trees and get an idea of how related or unrelated the sequences are. That information was then uh, inputted into a cluster generating software. I use Cluster Picker 1.3. A univariable and multivariable logistic regression was conducted among those who clustered or had highly related infections versus those who did not cluster. Additionally, uh, it's not included in this presentation, but we do want to also measure connectivity among those clustered individuals, and this will be done using a cluster validation package in R. Among our cohort of 3,956 sequences, 22.7% of sequences clustered. You can see the clusters uh, here in color, the sequences that clustered 
31 total clusters were identified, and these range in size. Uh, we see some clusters with only two individuals, and then other clusters with 300 plus individuals included in them. Four large clusters were identified, and these are clusters that have more than 10 individuals for a total of 820 sequences included in those four large clusters. This is a breakdown of the four uh, large clusters identified. Uh, three of the clusters include both Mexicans and Guatemalans, with cluster one and nine being primarily Mexicans, cluster 10 primarily Guatemalans, and then uh, cluster 31 consisted entirely of male Guatemalans. Um, aside from that, cluster one, nine, and 10 are majority male with a smaller proportion female. All clusters do have a relatively similar mean age, um, but they vary in risk factors across clusters. A univariable logistic regression was then conducted to compare those who have highly related infections uh, to those with unrelated infections or did not cluster. A country of origin and year of diagnosis were determined to be significant predictors of clustering. Um, among Guatemalans, they were 1.186 times more likely to belong to a large cluster than those uh, from Mexico with a p-value of 0.033. Additionally, year of diagnosis was found to be significant with those um, who have a more recent date of diagnosis being significantly more likely to have a highly related infection or belong to one of those large clusters. Age, sex, and risk factor were not determined to be significant variables. A multivariable logistic regression was also conducted, and this was done using backward model selection with the likelihood ratio test in a threshold of 0 0.200. Sex, age, and year of diagnosis were not considered significant and not included in the model. A country of origin and risk factor were both included in the model. As I mentioned previously, risk factor did differ, our proportions of risk factors did differ uh, between the two countries. And after adjustment or adjusting for risk factor in this model, we found increased significance with country of origin, uh, with those from Guatemala having a higher likelihood of belonging to one of those large infection clusters. Based on this information, we wanted to evaluate if there were any regions within these two countries uh, that had a larger probability of clustering. And we found that the Guatemalan state of Paten did show significance prior to correction for multiple comparisons. And while this didn't hold after von Ferroni correction, the, the significance or borderline significance is slightly interesting because a very small percentage of the study cohort is from the state of Paten. Only eight individuals, less than 1% of uh, the population of nearly 4,000 individuals. So we definitely did find uh, this interesting and something maybe to look into further. Additionally, the analysis was conducted among Guatemalans only, and we found that year of diagnosis was significant with individuals that have a more recent date of diagnosis being significantly more likely to have a highly related infection when compared to those with a later date of diagnosis. Our findings really demonstrated that individuals from Guatemala within our cohort are more likely to belong to large infection clusters. Additionally, phylogenetic analysis revealed that more recently diagnosed individuals are significantly more likely uh, to be related to other infections. The, both of these results are very uh, consistent with previous research. These findings also may suggest that recently infected individuals, especially from those from Guatemala, uh, may be part of large transmission networks. Additionally, uh, this research highlights the areas within Guatemala may be of interest for transmission. The significance prior to von Peroni correction that we found for the state of Patan is definitely interesting. Um, the state of Patan in Guatemala is a destination for a lot of tourism within the country. It's the location of Mayan ruins, which attracts visitors from all around the world. Additionally, and what I find really interesting, the state of Patan has been a place where the U.S. has sent rejected asylum seekers in recent years, regardless of whether or not Guatemala is their home country. Uh, this has been happening since the U.S.-Guatemala Asylum Cooperative Agreement. 
Uh, my study cohort actually ends with diagnosis in 2016, but in recent years during the Trump administration, the number of individuals sent to the state of Patan increased. I definitely think it's something very interesting to look into how um, asylum seekers sent to the state may be influencing HIV transmission in the region. But overall, uh, this study is really important because understanding transmission is critical in order to develop public health projects that use funds as effectively as possible. Recent trends are showing increases in transmission networks, which suggests continued transmission and is definitely a risk of transmitted drug resistance or transmitted drug mutations. Additionally, this research uh, emphasizes the importance of Guatemala in the Mesoamerican epidemic and highlights the need for further research in this region. Additionally, our study uh, is limited and that does affect its generalizability to all of Mexico and Guatemala. Um, mostly it is limited in the availability of the sample. This sample does not and frankly cannot capture everyone and therefore cannot capture all transmission. Um, our data is a look at HIV in a large region, which may not capture local transmission. For example, some of the states included had as few as one individual in that state, which may not capture a uh, transmission networks occurring there. Additionally, uh, demographic characteristics and geographical distributions of the cohort may not be exactly reflective of the population living with HIV in that region. We may have a higher prevalence of certain risk factors within our cohort than is represented um, in that area. And then lastly, HIV transmission, in my opinion, cannot be fully, fully understood uh, just due to current sampling methods. Most of these studies do rely on convenience sampling, my study included. Um, and because of that, there are certain people who may not be included in the study that transmission might be happening among. For example, uh, most of these sequences are collected as individuals come into clinical visits individuals who don't have access to health care or maybe be, may be in more rural areas where this program may not apply are not captured really within this data set. But ongoing work is happening really to extend the sample and capture as many individuals as possible. An example of that is through the inclusion of sex workers in this research. Uh, sex workers are currently very underrepresented within current molecular epidemiology studies in this region. In a systematic review I conducted, over 13,000 individuals were represented across 12 identified studies, and only 11 out of those 13,000 individuals were sex workers. This is really important because UNAIDS estimates that there are over 250,000 known sex workers working within formal establishments across Mexico and Guatemala. And this number may be higher uh, than what's represented here because this does not include individuals who work in informal establishments or uh, the number of traffic to individuals in these countries. Previous studies have indicated uh, sex workers have increased vulnerability to both acquiring and transmitting HIV and understanding and including these individuals in these studies is really critical to gaining more information on transmission networks in the region. Um, determining factors among female sex workers that belong to these large clusters will really help gain better information on uh, not only HIV transmission, but help develop targeted public health projects. Um, understanding transmission will not only help reduce HIV prevalence among sex workers, but additionally impact uh, sex work policy as well. So this is a conceptual framework which links sex work policy and HIV prevalence. Um, and as you can see, there are many contributing uh, factors here or different variables that go into it. And so when we look at HIV transmission as a whole, it is interconnected with sex work, sex work environment, economic development, border policy, drug abuse, physical violence, and many, many other contributing factors. Knowing demographic information uh, among individuals with highly connected infections will help illuminate ways in which transmission can be reduced in the future. Thank you so much. That is all I have. And a big thank you uh, to Dr. Mehta for guiding me through this research, Dr. Brower for working with sex workers very heavily in Guatemala and providing a lot of this data. And then of course, uh, thank you to Dr. Cuomo for hosting this event and the judges for being here. I'd like to open it up to any questions.